What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss even more iOS 18 and 18.1 features and changes. We're gonna talk details on the upcoming iPhone 16 event, big changes coming to next year's iPhones, Apple's potential investment in OpenAI, a crazy AirTag story, and more. And as always, if you enjoy this video and if you enjoy getting the latest Apple news on a weekly basis, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. All right, so this week we saw the release of iOS 18 beta 8 and also iOS 18 public beta 6 and we also saw the release of iOS 18.1 beta 3 for developers. Also this week we saw Apple officially announce the upcoming iPhone 16 event which is titled it's glow time and we'll talk more about that later on in this video. Anyways let's talk about iOS 18 beta 8 because this is going to be the final beta release before the RC or release candidate version which is going to be released most likely after the Apple event on Monday, September 9th. And we'll talk more about the dates near the end of this segment. But as far as any changes in beta eight goes, we weren't expecting anything major and that's exactly what we got, nothing major. However, I did notice that the Facebook icon now has a dark mode, which is interesting because Instagram still does not have a dark mode icon. So for some reason, Facebook got on, you know, at the last minute here with iOS 8, but we still don't have that for Instagram for some reason. Now, I did also point out that inside of our settings, we have a lot more dark mode icons now than what we had previously. And I also noticed how we have the descriptions or the explanations for certain sections in settings as well. Like for wallpaper, it shows the description of wallpaper underneath of that. That wasn't there in previous iOS 18 betas, at least that I've noticed. I've also noticed a minor improvement in the performance with beta 8 as well. So everything just feels a little bit smoother, a little bit more polished, which is to be expected since we're so close to the final release. However, the big news this week came with iOS 18.1 beta 3 because we got more new Apple intelligence features, one of which went viral and one of which is more useful to me than seemingly most people out there. So let me explain. So first off, the feature that went really viral over social media this past week is if you go into edit a photo, we have a new option down here for cleanup. And what this does is it will use Apple intelligence to smartly remove distractions, whether that be people, objects, whatever, in the background of an image. It does not impact anything on the foreground like the subject, but for example, you can see these bushes back here. If I tap on those, it will erase them and you can see my arm still looks normal. However, take a look at this lady's arm and see how it has my finger over top of that, my finger is also highlighted there. If I tap on her, it will eliminate part of my finger. So you can see it's not perfect by any means. I mean, this is the first beta deployment of this feature, so that's to be expected. It's not even close to the final version yet. But I think the thing to keep in mind here, and the thing that a lot of people seem to forget, is that this is not a generative fill feature. This is just simply, you know, object aware fill. So it's just using its content aware fill is what it is in Photoshop and other things. It's just using the content around it to fill in the area, you know, that's missing. So it's not going to be able to know that a finger should go there because it's not generative fill. So hopefully we get that in the future with this feature, but I don't expect that anytime soon. So again, this is mainly just for distractions in the background, not creating things out of nowhere, not repairing parts of an image if it gets removed. And I also talked about this in my what's new video, but you can also circle somebody face to blur it out so it didn't work right here but if I try to circle my face okay so it just eliminated me altogether but you will notice that it will blur out faces if you have a subject facing you straight on without sunglasses you can blur them out now also if you swipe up we do have the modified with cleanup badge down there as well so I'm wondering if in the future it will show on the actual image and not just down here at the bottom now a better example of this is this photo right here because you could see the people in the background and if I tap on them it eliminates it and it does a perfect job really I mean even right here, it does a great job. Obviously that plant got a little bit cut out, but you can see it did a much better job here with cleanup. So I've noticed again, that it really just works best when the background distraction is not like directly behind you or touching your body at all. And by the way, the reason that this feature went viral is because of course, a lot of Samsung and Pixel phone users have been commenting about how their phones have had this for years and how it's so much better, which they're right, you know, it is much better on those devices because it's been out 
out for a while. So again, this is Apple's first beta deployment of this feature. And even Mark Gurman on X mentioned how if this feature even fully ships with iOS 18.1 in October, it might have a beta label to go with it. That way you're not expecting it to be perfect. But in my opinion, the most useful feature that came with iOS 18.1 beta 3 are the summarized notifications for all applications. So now if we go into my notification center here, you can see that I'm making bank from X. First off, you can see there that pays my mortgage for this month. But anyway, you can see that for X, for example, we have two tweets from Mark Gurman, and it will summarize those right here. Same with everything here. So my home, it shows multiple status changes for entrance front door recently locked for Coinbase. It shows Ethereum, Solana and others are down Bitcoin down 4.58%. So it's just going to take all of those notifications and put a summary in one little you know section here so if i tap on that you can see all the alerts so instead of having to read every notification it will just summarize it into one which is so handy and it saves so much time on a daily basis this is where i really think the apple intelligence thrives is with saving time and being more efficient with your usage on your phone so i am a big fan of this feature and if we go into our settings we do have some additional settings for that as well under notifications we have the summarize previews option and you can disable that and you can also disable it from certain applications as well and speaking of apple intelligence it looks like it's no longer region locked to the us so if you live outside of the us you can now access apple intelligence as long as your primary language is english united states it cannot be english anything else it has to be english united states and if you reboot your device you should be able to join the waitlist and access apple intelligence starting with beta 3 that was not an option in betas 1 and betas 2 you had to basically set your whole apple id region to the us so that's a nice adjustment if you live outside of the united states and there was also a really random change to the music application in 18.1 beta 3 and this has to do with playlists so if you go into a playlist here you'll notice that we have a new animation when you go in and when you go out of that playlist so i'm not sure why this was not included in ios 18.0 beta 8 this is only in 18.1 beta three, but I found that to be quite interesting. We also have some updates to the Apple sports application. This is Apple's free sports application, which I think is better than ESPN and Bleacher Report. but this has been updated as well. And we now have live activities for all teams and leagues, starting with iOS 18 and watchOS 11. So you can see in Apple's press release, they said that it's now optimized for the latest NFL and college football seasons. The application now offers quick access to scoring drives presented alongside the view of every game play along with a new dynamic drive tracker that lets fans visualize where the ball is on the field at any time and apple did also say that it will be updated later this year with better search functionality and a better navigation setup in the wallet application if you tap on the plus right here and go to the driver's license and state id you will notice that we now have an option for hawaii so hawaii if you live there you can now add your digital drive driver's license to Apple Wallet, which is awesome. This is technically the sixth state that has been added here but we do also know that california is coming soon so technically seven states will soon at least be able to have their driver's license or state id in the wallet application for use at tsa checkpoints and other places now here's something that happened this week that i did not see coming the snapchat application has officially launched on the ipad so you can see in version 13.4.0.41 snapchat now offers native support for iPad. So we literally have a Snapchat for iPad before an Instagram for iPad. Make that make sense, please. Anyways, as far as the performance goes on iOS 18 beta 8 and 18.1 beta 3, on 18 beta 8, everything is fine. I literally have no issues with performance on this latest beta. I've really not had any major bugs for the past few beta. So performance overall rock solid on iOS 18 beta 8. Now, as far as iOS 18.1 beta 3, I have to say it is a bit better than beta 2, but I'm still having issues with the Siri UI fully showing 
showing up when I activate it. And Siri in general is just not very, you know, it's not very consistent even still in beta three. And overall, I still have random respring sometimes. So 18.1 beta three, definitely not the best when it comes to performance, nowhere near as good as iOS 18 at beta eight, which is to be expected with Apple intelligence always running in the background and everything. But as far as the battery life goes, here's where we actually do have a much more noticeable difference. So on iOS 18 at beta eight, nothing really changed there. I mean, I think it's pretty much the same as it was in beta seven, which it's been solid on beta ever since like beta five battery life has been pretty solid on iOS 18. So I would expect it to improve a little bit with beta eight, but with iOS 18.1 beta three, that's where battery life has gotten a lot better. So I've noticed a pretty big change going from beta two to beta three on my main device. Again, I use both devices throughout the week, but I do use iOS 18.1 more frequently. So I've noticed that battery life has improved drastically going from beta two to beta three. I don't have to charge my phone two, three times a day anymore. I usually just charge once. But again, it did just get released this week, so things can change. I will have a better idea of battery life come next week after using it for a full week plus. So let's talk about next week and and the following week. So next week is going to be the first week of September, the week of September 2nd. And I would predict that next week is going to be a very slow and a very boring week because I think this is going to be the lull period before the big boom period when iOS 18 gets released and the Apple event and the iPhone 16, all of that stuff is coming up. But I don't think that next week is going to be exciting at all in terms of software releases. Now, the week after, the week of September 9th is when we're going to have, you know, some stuff to talk about. So September 9th is the Apple event, and we should be seeing iOS 18 RC get released after that event. Now we should also see the next iOS 18.1 beta either that same day or the next day or sometime the week of September 9th. And then as far as the public release of iOS 18, that should come exactly a week later, most likely on September 16th, that Monday right there. That is most likely. And then as far as iOS 18.1, again, we're not going to see that until sometime in late October, most likely the week of the 21st or the 28th. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with the upcoming Apple event titled It's Glow Time. So I made a full video on what to expect, and you probably already watched that. But if you did not, I will leave it linked down in the description below and up in the cards up in the top right of this video. However, it will be taking place on September. September 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I will also be live streaming my reaction to that event here on the channel. So if you're not subscribed already, now is a good time to be subscribed so you will be notified of that live stream and join us in there. Now, we did also hear this week, aside from everything I talked about in that video, that AirPods Pro 3 are rumored to feature, quote, much better active noise cancellation over the AirPods Pro 2. Now, this came from a reputable source named Kosutami, and he claimed that the AirPods 3 are coming soon. Now, he didn't say when soon is, is but Mark Gurman did say not to expect the new AirPods Pro until 2025. So I think it's unlikely that we see them at this event. I know there have been rumors about them coming at the It's Glow Time iPhone 16 events, but I don't see that happening. I just think that we're going to see those two sets of AirPods 4. Now, since we already know pretty much everything there is to know about the iPhone 16 lineup, why don't we talk about next year's iPhone 17 lineup? Because things are starting to get very interesting when it comes to the rumors for this device. So according to Ming-Chi Kuo, he says that the iPhone 17 Pro Max, which might also be called the Ultra, is going to have 12 gigabytes of RAM for enhanced on-device Apple intelligence capabilities. And he says that all other iPhone 17 models, along with the iPhone SE 4, will allegedly stick with 8 gigabytes of RAM. But here's where it gets really interesting because he says that the highest-end model will also have an upgraded cooling system with vapor chamber technology. Meanwhile, all of the other iPhone 17 models will continue to use the graphite sheets for thermal management. So I never thought we'd see the day where vapor chamber and iPhone are mentioned in the same sentence. So that will be tremendous for cooling down the iPhone if that actually happens, which could actually happen for the Ultra phone or the Pro Max, whatever it ends up being called. The Air, we've heard so many rumors, we don't know what it's going to be called. We are also still hearing that all iPhone 17s will support 120 hertz ProMotion 
content displays. Now here's something else that I found pretty interesting. So you know how Apple is going to have a chat GPT integration in iOS 18? Well, now we're hearing that Apple might be joining Nvidia and Microsoft in investing in OpenAI, who is the chat GPT maker. Now this news comes from the Wall Street Journal, and they're saying that this could potentially value the company above a hundred billion dollars with a B. And this was very interesting because it's not very often that you see Apple making venture investments like that just does not happen very often. Anyways, let's finish off with another crazy AirTag story. This time, a woman in Santa Barbara, California was fed up with her packages getting stolen out of her post office box. So she came up with a genius plan involving AirTags. So since she knew that the thefts would continue, she placed an AirTag in a package and shipped it to herself at her mailbox at that post office. And sure enough, it was stolen in no time. And once she realized that it was stolen, she contacted contacted the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office, who tracked the AirTag to a location in Santa Maria, 16 miles away. And of course, this led police right to the two suspects, and they were able to recover the stolen package, along with items from over a dozen other victims. And the suspects, a 27-year-old woman and a 37-year-old man, were booked on multiple charges, including conspiracy, identity theft, and burglary. Man, that is such a genius big brain way to use an air tag. I love it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe for more and I'll see you soon.